Hello, everyone. I'm Jose Dubé. I'm a foreign specialist here at the University of Florida, North Florida Research and Education Center in Ariana. I'm here today to share some of our results uh, on how to integrate forest legumes into livestock systems. We had some pretty good data uh, after you know four years of research, and I think it's important to share there with you. So in Florida, most of the livestock systems are, are based on um, perennial grasses such as bahia grass, sometimes the grass. And in order to be productive, they, they do require some fertilizing input, input especially nitrogen fertilizer. Um, but here in Florida, again, there are opportunities to uh, incorporate and integrate some um, perennial uh, legumes uh, into grazing systems. And in some cases, like here in the tank handle, we can also oversee those perennial systems with uh, annual full season legumes. Uh, incorporating uh, forage legumes into livestock systems have um, not only potential to improve uh, the livestock performance, but also reduce uh, the cost of fertilizer, for example, uh, and in addition, um, provide some other uh, ecosystem services, uh, reduce nitrate leaching, uh, and for example, providing better habitat for, uh, for bees and other um, services that are important for the society. So we're going to try to present a summary of our grazing study that took place here at the um, research station in Mariana uh, from 2016 until 2019. It's still going on, but I'm going to present data of four years. So pretty much uh, in these uh, systems, in the grass legume systems, we have a strip planted uh, perennial peanut. We use the cotor variety uh, onto uh, Argentine Bahia grass pastures. And those systems we oversee during the cool season with a blend of clover. Uh, we use uh, crimson red clover um, and bulk clover, three clovers. And the idea uh, of blending those clovers is to uh, extend the grazing season because we have earlier clovers, late clovers. And when you mix them, you extend the grazing season. So we compare uh, those systems uh, with nitrogen fertilizing system and also control without um, the fertilization during the summer, but there's some clovers during the winter with the hope that the clovers would leave some nitrogen behind for the bahia grass in the summer as well. So those are the systems if you uh, read in the row. Uh, you have the warm season and cool season. So the first system is uh, bahia grass with 100 pounds of nitrogen during the summer, and that is split into two applications of 50. And then, uh, in the cool season, late in the fall, uh, we oversee those pastures with our cool season grass and uh, 100 pounds more of nitrogen. And that is speaking 30 pounds that, um, after planting the cool season, after overseeding three weeks later, uh, and then 70 pounds late in January, late, late January, early February. Uh, so the total of that system, which we call the grass plus nitrogen system, no legumes there, uh, is 200 pounds of nitrogen per year. Uh, the second system that we're trying is the unfertilized Bahia grass pastures uh, in the summer without no nitrogen fertilizer. And that system is also overseed late in the fall uh, with a cool season grass mix uh, in a green blend. The cool season grass that we've been using for all of those systems in the last four years has been Ryan Oats. Uh, and the legume blend is the same, crimson, red, and bulk clover. In this case, this system has 30 pounds of nitrogen only uh, during the fall, just to help those cool season grass to come up. Uh, finally, you have the grass legume mixture, where we have legumes both in the warm and in the cool season. Uh, and in that case, the warm season legume will be rhizoma peanut uh, eco turf, mixed, blended with bahia grass, street planted. Uh, and the cool season grass legume mixture similar to the other system. That's the summary of the results of the, the past four years uh, for the cool season. Uh, remember the cool season, uh, the grass plus nitrogen receives uh, 100 pounds of uh, nitrogen. In the other systems, they only have uh, clovers plus 30 pounds. So you're replacing 100 by 30 by adding the legumes. So as you see, uh, there was some um, difference in terms of stocking rate. Uh, with grass plus nitrogen uh, having a greater stocking rate. The average daily gain was not um, 
significantly different. And at the end, the gain per area was similar. We produce around uh, 200 pounds per acre per season. And again, uh, we are able to replace 100 pounds of nitrogen by 30 pounds of nitrogen by adding the cool season labels. When you move to the warm season, uh, then there were more differences in, in those systems. Uh, the grass plus nitrogen, and again, they received 100 pounds of nitrogen during the summer, in this case, uh, had a greater stocking rate compared to the other systems. And the one with, uh, with rhizoma, peanut, and clover in grass had the lowest stocking rate. However, the average daily gain in the grass legume system was 80% greater than the other system. We have 1.3 pounds per day compared to 0 0.7, 0 0.8 at the most for the other system. And at the end of the story, and again, this is a summary for four years of data, we had uh, greater uh, gains in the summer for the grass legume system compared to the unfertilized system. And it was similar to the uh, grass plus nitrogen. Uh, but again, uh, the grass plus clover and perennial peanut didn't receive any fertilizer, any nitrogen fertilizer during uh, the summer. And the, the grass plus nitrogen received 100 pounds. So when you put together the cool season and the warm season, uh, and again, this is four years of data, in general, uh, we had a greater stocking rate uh, for the grass plus nitrogen system. And again, this system ha uh, has 200 pounds of nitrogen per year uh, compared to only 30 pounds of nitrogen per year for the two other systems. And it had a lower stocking rate for the perennial peanut system. However, uh, the average daily gain was similar. Uh, it was not significantly different. And I want to, make, to point out that this average daily gain is uh, it's right on target to develop heifers, for example. So it could dedicate this system to you know to develop heifers, uh, you know, 1.4 pounds per day. That's about you know the number that you're looking for for developing heifers. And uh, and at the end, uh, you could produce similar gains, uh, 580 uh, pounds uh, per year in the grass legume system compared to the system that received 200 pounds of nitrogen per year. And here in the legume system, we only had 30. So that's a significant result uh, for the for the grass legume system. Uh, Chris Pravat, uh, uh, livestock economist in our group, uh, put some numbers in terms of the economics. Uh, and, and at the end of the story, uh, he put together the, the average uh, revenue, the, the forage costs, and then the annual return over forage costs. In the grass legume systems, uh, both of them, uh, the one with perennial peanut and the, only, and the one only with the clovers in the winter, they look better uh, in terms of economic uh, returns over uh, the forage costs compared to the grass uh, fertilizer system. Uh, another important uh, point is that nitrate uh, concentration uh, in the soil was uh, lower in the uh, grass legume system and, and also uh, the nitrate stock. And that's an indication that less leaching is occurring in the grass legume system, uh, which helps, you know, our springs and, um, and water bodies that we know that has been suffering from uh, overload of nitrates uh, over the past uh, 30, 40 years. Uh, we also uh, measure uh, the different bee species in, uh, in those different systems. And we identified 18 uh, different uh, bee species in the study. Most of them are native bees. Uh, we are able also to find uh, more bees uh, in, in the grass legume mixture, which is this green bar on the left side. Uh, so more bees were present on the grass legume uh, mixture because you know more flowers than the clovers. Uh, and at the end uh, of the story, when you compare also the you know the two grass legume systems and in contrast with the uh, fertilized system, we had more bees in the grass legume system. We've been doing a lot of extension activities and uh, in fact, uh, this program, uh, we we've been in contact with NRCS uh, and they were able to uh, integrate uh, these. Uh, Strip planting of perennial peanuts in the equip program. 
Uh, so there is uh, funds for producers who are willing to uh, establish strips of perennial peanuts. Uh, uh, they pay $254 per acre, so that's a pretty good help to help integrating perennial peanuts into grazing systems. Uh, I've been doing a lot of uh, publications on those, Edis publications. Lot, lots of st students have been trained. Uh, and there are many, many producers that uh, have been contacted that are implementing the system in their, in their farms. Uh, and we are able to reduce from 200 pounds to 30 pounds of nitrogen per year uh, and kept you know, livestock productivity. And in, in addition to that, we also were able to provide more um, ecosystem services like I, I just showed. So at the end of the story, integrating forest legumes, integrating uh, into grazing systems uh, have potential to, to add nitrogen uh, via biological nitrogen fixation and to reduce fertilizer costs. Uh, the peanut, especially during the summer, uh, increased by 80% the average daily gain of cattle, and that's uh, pretty amazing. Uh, so for developing heifers, uh, you have, you know, uh, animals with greater nutrient requirement, that's why it's on target for that. Uh, for new pin has a good uh, history here in Florida. It's, it's persistent on the grazing skin, you know, on the grazing for We have plots of more than 40 years at the beach research unit in Gainesville, and they're still there. Um, uh, they, they are persistent. Uh, there are different ways to establish perennial peanut, but strip, strip planting seems to be an option to reduce establishment cost. And uh, NRCS equipped program uh, has been um, funding that. Uh, and again, in addition to reduce fertilizer, maintain cattle productivity, uh, legumes also uh, provide other services that are important uh, for, for the entire society. So that we need to take that into account. I want to thank uh, uh, FDEX, who's funding this uh, uh, project right now. And it was previ previously funded by NIFA as well. And uh, it, this is a teamwork. Uh, lots of uh, students, uh, interns, and, and colleagues from different areas have been collaborating. Uh, and I feel that these are very good data um, to present since uh, it's long term, four years already. Thank you very much. And uh, that's my email. If you want to reach me, I'll be able to, I'll be glad to, to, to talk to you. Thank you very much.